Hi everyone, this is Jason Paul Peterson from PetersonPianoAcademy.com and today I want to talk to you a bit about the most common pedaling mistakes that people make at the piano. Now pedaling, Chopin for example, famously said that pedal is the soul of the piano and I don't think he's exaggerating. Pedaling is something which is so vitally important. It can change a piece for better or for worse almost more than any other single thing at the piano can, with the exception of perhaps the notes themselves. Pedaling is absolutely crucial, and it's one of the ways that I recognize almost instantaneously whether somebody is a professional or a talented amateur or maybe just a complete beginner. So being aware of the most common pedaling mistakes that people make when playing the piano will take your playing to a higher level really almost faster than anything else. Some of these things that I'll, I'll mention today are incredibly easy and quick fixes that make such a difference and I'll demonstrate for that for you uh, today. So let's jump right in and let's talk about mistake number one that a lot of people make at the, at the piano which is with regard to pedaling not paying attention to the harmonies. Keep in mind that the reason we fundamentally use the pedal is to connect notes that belong to the same harmony. So if I'm playing for a long time and all of the notes belong to the same harmony, for example, um, all of those notes are part of the same chord, I can keep the pedal held down. Likewise, something like all of those notes are part of the same chord, I can keep the pedal held down. But if the harmony changes, no matter how fast those changes come, I need to have a new pedal on every single harmony. So if I'm playing Chopin and I'm playing, for example, this chord, and this chord, and this chord, and this chord, every, on every one of those chords I have to lift the pedal up and put it back down again because otherwise I get a cacophony of sound like this. So being aware of the harmony is incredibly important when using the pedal. Another example, just to give you a, one quick final example of, of harmony and pedaling, something that a lot of people don't think about is when you have a, a resolution, something like this, which resolves downward to form the note of a chord. What a lot of people will do is just keep the pedal held down, and then you get these two notes blurring together. So you have to be thinking harmonically and realize this is a chord there, I can put the pedal down. So that's something uh, to keep in mind. Um, if you have seen my, my course at petersonpianoacademy.com, you'll notice that I actually show the pedal on every single video where I would use pedal so you can see exactly what I would do. That can make a, a huge difference. Um, uh, it's, it's so much more than just playing the notes. It's really, really important. Now, the second thing that I would want to mention with regard to the pedal is that so many people don't change the pedal often enough. And this is closely related to point number one with harmony. Uh, beginners in particular have the habit of just putting the pedal down and leaving it there. I can't tell you how many times I've heard performances like uh, something like this. <laughs> It's a terrible, terrible thing. It absolutely destroys the piece. So you need to lift the pedal uh, as often as the harmony demands, going back to point number one, but also uh, just thinking about really listening and being sure that any time the notes sound blurry, you lift the pedal. So not lifting often enough is probably one of the very most common sort of sins with regard to the pedal and beginners. Um, a closely related thing, this is what I would say is point three, not lifting the pedal far enough. Now I'll give you an example of this. If I play a chord here and I, and I lift the pedal up and put it back down right away, you'll see what happens. Take my hands away, lift the pedal, put it back down, all the notes are still there. I'll do it again. Up, down, you can still hear the notes. Watch this. Lift the pedal, put it back up. You'll still hear all those notes. Why is that? Well, when we're dealing with an acoustic instrument, when I lift the, the pedal, when I lift the pedal up and the dampers go down on the strings to silence them, 
The strings, because of the vibration, keep vibrating for a little while. You need to have just a little bit of time in, in, in order to really silence those strings. And you need to be sure that the pedal is coming down, uh, that the dampers are coming down under the strings for long enough to silence them. So if I play that same chord, and I be sure to lift the pedal all the way up and then back down, then you'll see that those notes have become more or less silenced. Now this is a, an important point, especially with regard to acoustic versus digital pianos, because on digital pianos, the pedal often functions more or less like a switch. So there's, it sends a signal basically to the piano that says, when you lift it up, there's a point where it just cuts off the sound sort of immediately. An acoustic piano is much more complex. When you're dealing with actual uh, strings and actual hammers, um, there isn't a, a, a definitive on-off point like you have on a digital piano. So it takes just a little bit more time to lift up the pedal, put it back down. So especially if you're used to practicing on a digital and you switch to an acoustic, something you really need to keep in mind. Listen to make sure you're lifting the pedal all the way up so that the notes are actually getting silenced. What I see a lot of times from students is that they're doing everything right in terms of where they're lifting the pedal, but it's still becoming a complete blur because the pedal isn't having time to silence the notes effectively. I'll show you here if I were to play again Chopin. Uh, if I lift the pedal too fast and put it right down, across on the video, but at least here it produces a real cacophony of sound. Even though I'm lifting the pedal on every chord, I was being too fast about it. So that's something to keep in mind. Listen to, to be sure you're lifting the pedal all the way up, and in the best case, if you can, wait just a, 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 a fraction of a second before you put it down. Instead of doing this, go bum bum. That little bit makes a, an enormous difference with the pedal. Um, Another thing, let's come to our next point about uh, common pedaling mistakes. Um, I've seen this many, many times and it's really, really bad, so please don't do this. If you're using the pedal, be sure to always keep your heel on the ground. Do not lift your heel up, your entire leg up and push it up and down like this. Your heel stays on the ground and your toes move up and down. Why is that? Why is that so important? Well, if, if you're using your whole leg, you don't have a good sense of where the pedal is. It's much harder to, to sort of feel that. If your heel is anchored on the ground, you always, you can control the pedal much better. And um, to be honest, if you, if you do this thing where you lift your whole leg up, any professional who sees that, who knows, in fact, anybody who knows anything about the piano will know right away that you're a, uh, uh, an amateur pianist. Uh, it loses you a whole lot of points right away. Not only does it, um, does it sound bad usually, but it looks bad as well. So really avoid that. I can promise you that's an important thing. Um, one more thing, not taking style into account. It's one of the big mistakes that a lot of beginners make when using the pedal. So um, there are pieces, for example, which belong to the Baroque era. In fact, most pieces written in the Baroque era should be played with um, quite sparse or even no pedal because of the fact that these instruments, these pieces were not conceived for uh, the modern piano with the pedal as we have it. Pieces that were written for the harpsichord, for example, the harpsichord does not have a sustained pedal like the, like the piano does. And so you need to take into account what sort of style you're playing. If you're playing, on the other hand, say, uh, romantic music or impressionistic music, you can get away with using a lot more pedal. And that's something that um, requires some discussion, of course, on a piece by piece basis. But be sure that you're thinking about the style of the piece, whether pedal is appropriate to it, um, not just whether pedal is possible, but whether it's actually appropriate to the kind of sound and style of music that you're going for. So those are just a few tips with using the pedal. And if I could add just one more thing, more important than anything else with the pedal is to always be listening. The pedaling that you use on one piano may not work at all on another piano. It may not work in another space. What works in the practice room might not work in a concert hall. And so you have to constantly be willing to adjust, ready to adjust, uh, and really on the spur of the moment to change the pedaling 
in order to create a sound that's clean and warm and really effective. So if you keep those tips in mind with the pedal, you'll be well on your way to making an enormous amount of progress and really hitting the next level with your piano playing. So I hope this video helps and uh, best of luck, happy practicing. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.